Five people are now dead. One in critical condition after taking extra strength Tylenol. Bottles of the pills with the serial number MC2880 are being recalled. The search for Tylenol suspect James Lewis zeroes in on New York City, where authorities say Lewis and his wife were spotted less than a week ago. Extra strength Tylenol capsules laced with a cyanide are linked with five deaths in Chicago. Callers had heard news that cyanide contaminated Tylenol capsules had killed six people in Chicago. Authorities suspect sabotage. Let's go back to 1982 in Chicago, Illinois, where the Tylenol murders first started. And then we'll get into the copycats. On September 29th, 1982, Mary Kellerman, a 12 year old, died after taking a capsule of extra strength Tylenol. Immediately following her death, Adam Janus died after taking Tylenol, along with his brother Stanley and wife, who also died from taking Tylenol from the same bottle. Within the next few days, Mary McFarlane, along with Paula Prince and Mary Rayner, died from taking Tylenol. Once it was realized that all these people had recently taken it, tests were carried out that discovered cyanide in the Tylenol bottles. Warnings were issued through media outlets and patrols using loudspeakers warning residents throughout the Chicago area to not take Tylenol products. Being that the Tylenol bottles were tampered with, the police ruled out the manufacturers. The seven deaths all happened in the Chicago area, so this had nothing to do with the production. Police believed that this was one person who was committing these crimes. So the source had to be most likely supermarkets and drug stores over a period of weeks. Whoever the person was, have to have added the cyanide and placed the bottles throughout the stores and the areas. In addition, the five bottles that led to the victim's deaths three other tampered with bottles were later discovered. On October 5, 1982, a nationwide recall of Tylenol products was issued. It was determined that only the capsules in the Chicago area were tampered with. Johnson & Johnson offered to exchange all Tylenol capsules already purchased by the public for solid tablets. Hundreds of similar attacks involving Tylenol, over-the-counter medications, and other products also took place around the United States right after the Chicago deaths. Three more deaths occurred in 1986 from tampered gelatin capsules, one in New York, and two in Washington from cyanide poisoning. An arrest was made for the Washington murders of Stella Nichol. A man named James William Lewis sent a letter to Johnson & Johnson demanding $1 million or else he won't stop the Tylenol murders. Eventually, he was arrested and sent to prison for extortion, but not the Tylenol murders due to the lack of evidence. In 1983, in a ploy to fish out the killer, the FBI, with the permission of Mary Kellerman's family, let the public know the location of her gravesite, thinking that the killer will visit the gravesite of their victim. In early 2009, the investigation was reopened due to the anniversary and the investigators relying on the advancement of technology to help with the case. James Lewis was investigated again, with him and his wife providing DNA in 2010. Even a Unabomber was investigated, but nothing came out of that. As of now, is it too late to solve this case? Will the murderer strike again? Or has he or she committed crimes again? and we never connected the dots. This leaves us all with questions. Mine is, will it happen again? <laughs>